Formula One is back. And today I'm leaving Perth and Qantas, heading to Bahrain for testing and then the first race of the 2023 season. You have a lovely trip today and good luck for the Formula One. Through security, well actually it's the first of two securities because I'm now into the domestic airport. Qantas flies out of the domestic even for international flights. And now there's more screening to go into the international terminal. This is the Qantas Lounge. Food's good. It's breakfast time, so there's scrambled eggs, bacon, sausages, fresh juice, which I uh, made myself and I thought was pretty darn good. Oh, and there's a surprise traveller on the flight. It's my wife, Tonya, and she's going with her girlfriend, Rebecca, to Singapore. What happened was I had this seven-hour layover in Singapore. Yesterday, Tonya decided, oh, I'll come up, I'll bring back, we'll have three days up there, go and have dinner with me tonight, which is nice, I don't have to hang around the airport, and then it's off to Dubai, a few hours on the ground, and the final short flight to Bahrain. Hello. Thanks. Go ahead. Thank you. Last year I was on 66 different flights. This year, this is the first of 52 I've booked. This is a Qantas A330-200. It's about 14 years old. It's 121 in business. And it's a rather special aircraft because it's painted in rather different colors. Normally the Qantas logo is black, but this time it's in a number of different colors. And then there's this Pride is in the Air logo towards the back of the aircraft. Oh, and its name? Whit Sundays to some magnificent islands off the coast of Queensland. Now I've been on this aircraft before and reviewed it and I might have mentioned the fact that uh, the seats in sitting upright position, fantastic, lying flat, fantastic, but if you have to do the recline to watch telly, I don't reckon it's that comfortable. On this flight we take off from Perth and then we head northwest-ish over Indonesia and finally land into Singapore. It's about a five hour flight. Then I've got seven and a half hours on the ground, and then it's about a seven hour flight, I think, and then a one and a half hour. Is there an amenities kit? Yes, there is. It contains hand cream, lip balm, face cream, the socks, and some eye shades in an ice brown bag. I've always been keen to see how much actual lotion is in one of these container so this is a brand new -y. I'm going to show you bloody hell that's hardly hardly anything that's it that's good for about I reckon two good hand rubs maybe three we're a little over an hour into the flight and lunch has been served first up it was pan fried potato gnocchi with pancetta peas and roasted cherry tomatoes. The main course, it was a seared beef fillet with chipotle butter, corn puree and broccolini. And to finish it off, just some Maggie beer ice cream. We're just flying over one of the most beautiful places in the world. This is the north coast of Western Australia. That's Exmouth and Shark Bay down there. And if you ever come to this part of the world, Make sure you go and dive with the whale sharks. It's quite amazing. I'm now going to watch a movie and I pick the thing called the menu. We're not far away from landing and I can give you the big tip. Do not waste any time watching a movie called the menu. I got 15 or 20 minutes into it and just gave up. quite a long layover here in Singapore so I've nipped down here to have a look at the Marina Bay circuit when it's not full up and ready to go with Formula One and have a look at that and this is a very empty paddock it's a completely different situation come uh, race weekend on a balmy Singapore night there are a few better places to be than right down here with the Malayan in the background and over this side we've got the magnificent Marina Bay Sands and so many people enjoying themselves this is the Anderson Road bridge and on this side it is paved but on this side, it's tarmac for racing. If you're a photographer and you use the program Lightroom, like I do, you're going to love my preset packages. There's two of them available. Upshift, which contains 15 Lightroom presets, and the brand new Slipstream, 
which contains another 10. Get on to kimelman.com and have a look. I think you'll be delighted. Save you a whole lot of time and enhance your photographs. Well, that was a very nice layover here in Singapore. Now it's off to the airport for the second of my three flights en route to Bahrain. See you, sir. See you later. Thank you. This one. Where are you going? I'm going to the uh, airport, Emirates. Pretty impressive. Oh, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you. Well, this is the Emirates Lounge here in Terminal 1, and it's okay. It's nothing like the next lounge I'll be going to, which is the first class lounge in the Dubai Terminal. I love the A380 tonight. I've got one, although I won't be enjoying too much of any of the in-flight because I'm pretty much going to get on and go to sleep. Hello. I've landed seat 9A on today's flight, and I can't remember the last time I flew business class on this particular configuration. I've flown the other one, which is 232, which is terrible, but this is quite lovely. Good sized television, little mini bar up here, lots of controls, an iPad to operate the various systems, and a seat that goes into the full lie flat with some lovely linen. Some orange, some apple, I can bring you some champagne as well. Uh, just some water would be fine, thanks. Why don't you have water bottles? Do you want some ice? Yes, yes, please. I'll bring Thank it to you. Now Qantas, pay attention, look at what you get when you fly Emirates in their business class in terms of amenities. Tissues, underarm deodorant, shaving cream and a razor. A dental kit, comb, Bulgari face moisturizer and body lotion, as well as lip balm and a Bulgari fragrance. This is Aqua. Oh, it's gorgeous. Well done Emirates. Seven hours after takeoff, we're landing, and uh, luckily I had five and a half hours sleep. So far, nothing lost, and um, I'm heading off to what I think is the best airline lounge in the world. And I've got three and a half hours there. It runs about 200 meters that way, and 200 meters that way, left and right of the main entry, are these duty free stores. I can't remember anyone ever shopping here. Do they have everything here? No, it's pretty much just the very high end stuff. Your crazy Louis 13 cognacs and high end spirits, which obviously is being bought by somebody. What I love about this lounge is it seats probably 500 people, maybe more. And I've never seen any more than about 40 in here, maybe 60. So there's plenty of room. If you need access to a computer, you'll be spoiled here. There are a number of them. If your phone's running low on power, whack it in one of these charging boxes. Heading further down, you'll find all these little areas. And during normal hours, this would be staffed by a human shining your shoes. What are you serving today? We have here, sir, a uh, sushi, sir, bar. Yes. And then we have the muffins, we have the fruit platter and the cake, sir. And especially, sir, we have here, sir, the Arabic coffee. Arabic coffee. Now, I hate coffee, I never drink it, but this young lady's kind enough to pour me one, so thankfully it's not very hot, and it's very bitter. Not my cup of tea, but you also, as a matter of course, eat these dates. Mm, that's more to my liking. And unlike a lot of lounges, there are power points everywhere throughout this one. Oh, breakfast is done, and I shouldn't have had that burger, but boy, boy was it good. This is the lounge I've been in for the last three hours. And this is my boarding gate, 6A. This business cabin's configured 232, and you do not want to get that middle seat. They don't lie flat, but on a 50 minute flight, that's of little importance. That was a very short flight, very quick through customs, and now it's grabbing our luggage and uh, then a car, and heading off to the hotel. One car collected, and I got an upgrade. Bit of a bonus, and uh, there was one guy going off in there, absolutely bunter, and one of the staff at the other counters. Oh, hey, I didn't say hey. I said, I said you. I said, I didn't say hey. Huh? Anyway, now it's off to the city and see what the traffic's like in Bahrain today. Good morning. How much done? <laughs> I stayed at this hotel in 2019 and uh, quite liked it and there's a shopping centre that's right next door. So there's 
everything you want, stones throw away. Great, thank you so much. Beautiful. Enjoy your stay with us. And this is my room on the 11th floor, and uh, I remember it well from the last time I was here in 2019. It's certainly comfortable, it's large, and the bathroom is pretty nice. I left my Perth home at 9 a.m. on Monday, and it's now in Perth, 4.20 p.m. the next day, so it's been 30 odd hours to get here. Thankfully, this is a lovely hotel, although the view out this window here is, well, during the day, less than impressive. I'm just about to head out to the track, but before I do so, I have to pick up one very important document. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. This is a very important piece of plastic. It gets me access into all races this year. This is the 2023 F1 Photographer's Permanent Pass. It's great to be back here in Bahrain for Formula One, and if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and become a member for a whole host of extras. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com. For wall art, F1 photo books, signed prints, and merchandise, go to KimElman.com, and for my best images live from the track and all during the week, head to Instagram and search my name, at KimElman. Thanks for watching. And stay passionate. <laughs>